Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is KI6VIN here in Santa Rosa, California. And I finally finished a project I've been working on for a while. How to make a compact bug out repeater that's going to be somewhat efficient and uh, not melt down using uh, a couple of HTs. So I just want to show you what I did and kind of explain my ideas and uh, maybe give somebody else some ideas. So I started with a couple of just pelican type boxes. This one, this one pretty much just has the radios in it. Got everything kind of tuned and set up crossband. So basically four UV four, UV five R's, batteries, external mics. Uh, I'm running the the com the uh, Sane Sonic whip for these. Uh, seems to work pretty good. Hits all my local repeaters. So now on to the good stuff. So again, I started with, what I wanted to do is make something that was basically self-sufficient, portable, light, uh, didn't want to have to haul a 50 pound battery up. Um, I didn't want to put out, you know, 8, 10 watts is about good enough because if I, you know, plant it on a hill. And I wanted to be able to be flexible enough to do GMRS, FRS in an emergency. Um, so. I'm almost legit. All right, so got the whole thing wired with end connector for a little loss, dealing with low power. That's a big thing, good coax. So I'll get into this, this is solar panel. All right, so what we got? Pretty much, got this right here. Uh, a couple of Bofong BF8HPs, the high power, third generation, best of whatever you could call the best of Bofong. Um, but again, I didn't want something expensive that was going to get ripped off. You know, I wasn't looking for high power. I know heat is an issue, but I've got it all timed to where uh, it's not going to be a problem. So we got two Bofong F8HPs. I took the charge cradles apart of the late model ones and took out the rig, the voltage the charger, hardwired into the battery with a Dean's connector, and then that, so both of them have charge, and I'm running the, uh, just the 1200 milliamp packs. So I've got them, and these chargers work best on 10 volts, so I've got a voltage regulator here, step down regulator, which, uh, keeps the voltage clean, keeps everything quiet. Um, so, and then for a controller, I'm running the Ideomatic 4, and uh, that posed quite a few issues <laughs> that uh, made me scratch my head for a while. So, the first thing is getting a core out of a Bofong. <laughs> I see the wire sticking out there. If you go on to the board, take the radio apart. Lots of uh, videos on YouTube for that. Take the radio part and uh, the audio. There's a uh, integrated circuit there on pin number two on the audio output. I think it's the audio amplifier circuit, and it sends 7.3 volts when the squelch is broken. So I've got it set up with uh, CTT, CTTS, and so that works. So that got my core signal, which triggered the ID the idiomatic to transmit to my radio. So then I got it all done and my audio was almost non existent. Well come to this is another issue I guess people have and I came up with a fix is the output voltage of the Bofong for the audio circuit is about four volts max. The idiomatic likes higher voltage input from like a audio output of a mobile unit. You know, this was kind of designed for the Motorola Max track, so. So I've got that, and then I had no audio. So I had experimented with Vox for a while and found that the audio between the both handhelds was good. So I ended up tying the audio parallel to the repeater board 
and uh, put in a Xenier diode for the output so I still have the beacon and the ID and all the repeater actions. The core still transmits and uh, it works great. No problems. Good audio, plenty of audio, good signal. You know, I have a uh, two cooling fans blowing on each radio with a cooling exit. Um, I'm running for antennas. Oh, okay. so the whole thing runs. I was running a lead acid battery to begin with. Then I started researching the lithium power. So this is an 18 amp hour pack. That weighs about three pounds, where my 18 amp hour gel cell weighed about 25 pounds. This is more stable, has a built-in volt regulator. My solar system plugs right into it. Um, I'm pretty low power draw. And I've got the batteries in the, in the radio, so they're like a buffer. But so far, I've got a couple hours transmitting on this testing. Haven't heard the radio. <laughs> haven't even used half this battery pack so I'm pretty excited about that left me a lot more room for storage space so you know what I'm running for antennas is I have two outputs I am cross banding I do have a diplexer but I had some problems with it so what I'm running is the n9tax.com dual band slim jim these antennas are awesome set up for dual band RF choke, good connectors, all end connector, 16 foot of coax, you can't beat that. So I got two of those with extension coax, 100 feet of paracord, and basically take it up, throw it in a tree, extend one antenna up about 30 feet if I can, and then put the other one about 15 feet below it. Got to make sure you keep it the same, in the same vertical plane, and uh, so far so good. You know, and like I said, oh, so the solar panel. I had a couple solar panels, but I've got a couple of these X grid. And the cool thing about these is this little panel is 10 watts. So, and they connect together, which is super cool. In and out, in line. So I have two of these. I connect them together, it gives me a total 20 watt charge, which is 1.6 amps. And my uh, then I have a step up regulator that I'm going to make because the power pack likes 14 volts so I'm thinking I'll have some pretty good battery life as long as there's sunshine so this is just a little look at what I've been working on and uh, looking for a bug out box because you never know when the cell phones are going to go away the internet goes away you're stuck in the hills with your family want to stay in communication this will do it this is KI6VIN, and uh, have a great day there, YouTuber.